Hey guys, Tomboy 61 and today we got a game in the Benham, a recently re-added slash uh, double dipped premium, I guess you could call it. Of course, Benham was a campaign ship. Of course, when she was a campaign ship, she was not exactly accepted with the warmest reception. She wasn't opened with welcome arms. Uh, of course, at the time, we didn't have Albert Gleaves in the game, so she was a torpedo boat without a torpedo commander, which made her playing very difficult. Now, of course, I still really enjoyed Benham uh, when she came out. In fact, you can go back and watch my review of it from before I was a CC. The video only has like 134 views on it, so if you want to see some old content, feel free to go ahead and click on it. I'll go ahead and leave the link in the video, uh, but... I really enjoyed Benham back then, and then when Gleaves came out for it, I absolutely fell in love with this ship. Uh, and it has quickly become, I think, the ship I have the most Krakens with. It is absolutely deadly. Of course, it does always really count on the fact that you need some you need ships in the game that don't like uh, that don't like dodging torpedoes because uh, you do have a lot of them, but. They, uh, if someone knows how to dodge and doesn't want to, you know, sail in a straight line, that's when they're going to be relatively easily dodged. Uh, but anyways, Benham is now back in the shop. You can purchase it for either 500,000 global XP, which absolutely great. Same price as the Atlanta, or you can also purchase it for 12,500 doubloons. If you uh, missed out or didn't buy the Admiralty backing back when it was available. Look at that. Suzuya heading into the smoke. We go ahead, hit one torp on him, and then I think we end up popping two more. There we go. And a third, and he is down. This is why I love the Benham right there. You're able to take shots that you normally wouldn't because you have way more torps than you're used to having. You have four launchers. You have four quad launchers, so you have 12... Four, four times, four times four, 16 uh, torpedoes at your disposal, at your beck and call, and they reload mighty quick. I think they're just over a minute long on the reload, so you can go ahead and really send them down range uh, relatively quickly. So, it, 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 like, I don't know. It is, it is my, my go-to, like, one of my favorite tier six destroyers, and like I said, it is the one that I have the most number of, of Krakens with in this game just because of the 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 ability to just dump torps down range and really take advantage of people when they decide not to uh, go ahead and change course. Like this Amagi right here. We're going to go ahead, uh, fire off one set of torps that way, and then uh, swing on around, fire our other set. Uh, now, downsides of the Benham, well, to get those 16 Torp tubes, you are essentially giving up one turret from the Benson, so you're you're kind of cutting your your offensive capability down by by twenty percent, right? If if the if the regular Benson has five turrets, you have four turrets. That's a twenty percent reduction in uh in your ability to do damage, and it does absolutely take a toll on the Benham. You do really need to plan out when you are going to engage people uh, and how you are going to do it because uh, you can still win fights up against uh, other American uh, destroyers and you can still absolutely win gunfights with other destroyers. But if you're dumb about it, if you're rushing into spots, if you don't have support, you are probably going to lose because you can probably barely eke out the win on most, on most ships, uh, on most destroyers. And uh, then it gets relatively rough in order to go ahead and finish it. Uh, sadly, right there, our teammates go ahead and finish off that Duke of York, taking away that kill from us. But Amagi is still well within range. And it looks like we've done a fairly good job of clearing off this side over here. So we are going to go ahead, start pushing down and seeing what sort of trouble we can cause and maybe get into their back lines. And that is what Benham is really good at. It's if you go ahead and go with a concealment build as we have right here, we have Swirsky 
and we have uh, Bay and them with their concealment abilities on top of if you go ahead and kind of load the ship up with all of its other uh, concealment things being both the commander skills that, that help with concealment and also going ahead and taking the concealment mod, uh, you can get the ship down to 4.9, which is just absolutely beautiful. At this point, though, game kind of takes a turn for the worst. Uh, that that smoke cloud that was laid, well, there's two destroyers in the game. One of them is far off on the other side, and that smoke lasted a relatively long time. So, in my opinion, the only smoke that, uh, the only ship that could be in the cap right now is going to be the Akatsuki. We kind of had kind of looked at the, the, uh, who was in the game earlier that smoke lasted way too long for a lightning so it has to be the akatsuki we go ahead ping out the area saying hey we need to go ahead and handle this and our ships kind of make a turn but don't really and at this point we kind of have to abort our our torpedo runs in the back lines and we need to go ahead and start playing the objective go ahead put on that speed boost uh speed we have up to 40 like 40.5 40.7 knots so a 40 knot destroyer, which lets you go ahead and cross maps relatively quickly. Uh, when you use that speed boost, it also lets you go ahead and reposition really, really easily, which is very important for uh, for torpedo boats. If you think like the Japanese torpedo boats, their biggest weakness is speed, right? Like most cruisers could run them down, especially if they have speed builds because Japanese destroyers kind of cruise at a uh, 30 knots this being at 40 knots means you can go ahead, fire off a set of torpedoes and get the kind of rotation off to be able to then put a crossfire on your next set of torpedoes, uh, especially by the time that you do kind of make that maneuver, uh, your your tor torpedoes are going to go ahead and be fully reloaded. Akatsuki temporarily popping up right there. We go ahead, launch wide just in case uh, he, he decides to stay say horizontal the widespread torps will usually catch out these close range uh these close range destroyers assuming that they decide to stay horizontal we see him firing and we're like oh he must be heading away but actually he go, goes ahead pulls a yui and uh our torpedo goes ahead catches him out up for our second kill alabama now out on range he was in range for us for just a slight amount of time uh Given what we are dealing with now, we are kind of the front line of our ship. So we're going to have to start uh, just kind of picking people off as they come closer and closer to us. And uh, Alabama being the only ship that is really within range of us now, we are going to go ahead and uh, start uh, kind of moving in on the kill for the Alabama and start trying to uh, provide a screen because we don't know where that last destroyer is. And at this point, he's probably out somewhere in this area. Uh, we spotted him, of course. Uh, he was spotted last when we were down by those last sets of islands. So he hasn't popped up yet. But given how many battleships are now behind us, we do kind of want to pull that screening behavior for our battleships. If we can go ahead and spot any of the torpedoes or anything, uh, you know, kind of give them a warning. We do, though need to be cautious because it's going to be a lightning so we can't exactly run away very effectively we do have a speed advantage on him but he does have that sonar which can be particularly nasty especially because our major line of defense is going to be to pop smoke and uh at the range that we are going to uh engage him at and have to pop that smoke that we are going to be well within his sonar range and uh, it's not going to end well and Right here is kind of what you can see what I was talking about earlier, where we made that for first torp run, and now we are kind of dead center on where that Alabama is pathing. We don't want that, right? We want access to a larger silhouette of the ship. So instead, we are using our speed to be able to build that gap and also get off to the side of him so that we make that larger silhouette and an easier target to go ahead and torp. And at this point, it is now us and one battleship left. And uh, it is not looking good for us. We go ahead, see Alabama's turning out. We'll put one set of torps uh, narrow, one set of torps wide, swing, uh, and then get ready to swing the rear out and set off the second set of torps. Uh, of course, widespread can be very effective. 
I like using widespread also with Benham just as a way to filter uh, and have that larger area, especially because you can saturate an area like high saturation with the normal, uh, with one set of torps than a widespread. And it gives you that ability to really hedge your bet as to uh, catching someone out. We go ahead, hit one ship on, or get one flood on the Alabama. He goes ahead and uh, he damage cons. So now our priority is to hopefully get another flood on the Alabama. If we can get that flood on the Alabama, he is done because uh, he's not going to have a repair party and those torpedoes are looking good. We get one torpedo hit, no flood, and another torpedo hit, both into the torpedo barrier and sadly uh, resulting in absolutely no flooding. We will have, a, I think, two more salvos is about how long it's going to take him to get that uh, damage con back. So if we can go ahead and hit him uh, with the salvo, we're going to, to perform a little bit better. We're going to have that opportunity to go get the perma flood. And of course we saw that lightning. Lightning was very low, so we knew we need to go ahead and pri prioritize him. We get one hit on him. We hold the smoke until we know we're gonna finish him. We finish him, we pop the smoke to go ahead and disengage because now that smoke is gonna be providing line of sight uh, cover from the Alabama. Uh, thankfully, we took cover from their plane. Alabama had that up, which could absolutely easily spot us when we're firing. Alabama takes one on the nose, giving us the flood that we were looking for, and he is all but sunk because uh, he has just such little health. It is going to come down to if he can get that damage con back, and uh, we thankfully go ahead and avoid the lightning's torps right there. This isn't looking good for us, though, just because it is a 1v3, and, uh, you know, it 1v3 isn't going going to go too well. We end up flooding out Alabama. He was not able to get his damage control party back up in time, or he was not able to heal out. Wichita now coming in. We go ahead, throw off one, throw off two. We're within his nine kilometer uh, radar range. So we now need to start running away uh, because, you know, he knows if we're spotted, if he's spotted, he most likely has uh, a very good idea of where we just were and can absolutely easily use that radar. Thankfully, we go ahead and get out of range and we look at those sets of torps and we're just hoping. Only two minutes and 27 seconds left, so we only have a couple of uh, chances left on the launching. Wichita slowing down. It's looking promising on that second set of uh, torpedoes that we may hit him. We throw our other set towards the Alabama because if we can go ahead and knock him down, we know Wichita uh, just used its radar. So we could use the time to go ahead and close the distance. Of course, match is starting to wind down as far as amount of time we have left to go ahead and try to make our maneuvers. But we are going to try. And sadly, those Torps just don't have the speed. Alabama also goes ahead and makes his dodge. Sadly, now both ships are out of range. We're not going to go ahead and use our guns right now because if we do, we will absolutely get demolished uh, once we are spotted. We need to go ahead and torp these guys, and that's going to be pretty much our only way of, of being able to win it. Uh, Alabama is probably going to be our priority target just because Wichita is further away, but he is now actually in range, so we're going to go ahead, throw one more set of torps his direction, hoping that he's going to turn in and that, you know, luck be our lady, and it lines up for those torps. Those are out, and we are going to go ahead and and see that Alabama is now turning in. Uh, they, of course, are seeing that the area is contested, so they're going to turn back kind of towards us because they know we the last era we were, they, they can make a fairly educated guess as to where we are approaching the circle from. We go ahead, let off our torps towards Alabama, hope that this new path that they've gone on is going to be one that they continue on in order to try to hunt us down. Of course, the downside to this is that silhouette of the ship that we're trying to hit is no longer very wide, especially on cruisers. That's why it's very hard to uh, torp cruisers that are chasing you. Alabama, thankfully, we hit hit him once. He takes a flood, repairs it, and at this point, there's only 26 seconds left. We might as well go for the Kraken, and uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. Use those guns in the superstructure, and we're getting just little chunks of damage here and there, but... 
when we need it most with uh, just a little bit of time left. We go ahead, set the fire. At this point, we know we are good because he just burnt that damage party. We get the Kraken and that is the end of the game. And uh, that's a game in the Benham. Guys, if you like the video, go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.